I used to tell him, I can't even consider that. I understand how you feel. I know it should be okay. I used to tell him it should be okay. It should be safe for you and 10 other black boys. I want to try to record this again because um, I made a 10,000 subscriber video actually last week and I was not able to post it because I just got too emotional about the whole thing. But so I want to say thank you. Thank all of you for 10,000 subscribers. I mean, I, I never really imagined myself getting this far with my YouTube channel. Alhamdulillah, I'm very, very grateful. And, um, and I want to say thank you because you guys have been a very, very strong support system for myself. You know, I have to say with our family's transition from the U.S. to Gambia here, it was not an easy thing. But it made it a lot easier to have people rooting, like so many people rooting for you, you know, um, so many just pod, so much positive encouragement, people showing up for you, you know, um, to hear what you have to say, you know, watching the videos, commenting on the videos and um, yeah, so just showing, showing up for me um, and supporting me in a time where it was very, very difficult while I was making the transition. I was very, very happy, you know, to share with everyone the new experiences. But at the same time, in the background, <laughs> you know, I was facing a lot of challenges. Um, it's very difficult for us here on YouTube whenever uh, I would say like Af uh, when you're in, in Africa, any parts of Africa, not just Gambia, but YouTubers that are in any other parts of Africa sharing online is a very, very difficult thing because there's a lot of things that we can't say. Um, there are a lot of things that are, are not safe to put out on the internet, but then there are a lot of things that um, we're not able to say because our whole purpose is um, for you to be, for you to develop an interest in experiencing the country for yourself. So we know that just because we face certain challenges um, it doesn't mean that the person on the other end is going to face the same exact challenges because the way the way things are the way you're affected by things it has to do with your level of resilience and like every thing your your past experiences what you're experiencing currently and you know and 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 <laughs> and what you're able to endure you know so for myself when I'm experiencing something very difficult. I'm not motivated to go make a YouTube video about it and share that experience just in case someone moves here and experiences the same thing. I'm not motivated to do that because they 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 may not in fact have the same challenge. So for me, my journey was very very different from a lot of the Americans that move here to Gambia. You know, my husband is actually traveling still, so we intended for him to be traveling um, for his business as they're in the U.S. for two years. That was our plan for him to go back and forth and travel. For two years um he's still traveling <laughs> and it's been three years now you know so of course that that comes with um facing like a lot of a lot of different challenges you know so a lot of times when i'm experiencing things here in gambia it's hard for me to um share about them because i don't know if i truly don't know if if i'm experiencing this hardship because my husband's not here at the time or because because of just the different circumstances, like the circumstances, you know, Americans have a lot of fears um, surrounding coming to and even just visiting, you know, Africa, different parts of Africa. So our goal is to inspire, not to infl in inflict more fears, <laughs> you know, so it's just a hard position to be in because we want to be truthful. We want to be authentic. We're not trying to lie to you. We're not trying to paint this perfect picture. It's not perfect over here. It's not even close to perfect to be imperfect over here and I'm saying you will face a lot of challenges but the challenges that you will face you can look at it you can look at it like I'm 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 experiencing something new okay where you don't have expectations you can go into it like this is just an experience or you can look at it like I'm perceiving challenges okay and when those challenges start to happen, then that if you have that mindset, like, OK, I'm walking into a bunch of challenges when those challenges start happening, you'll you'll feel like, oh, I'm not equipped to do I'm not equipped to deal with this. But if you look at it as an experience, 
when you're experiencing something like, you know, it's just a, it's just a new experience. You know, the hardship that you're facing is not going to be like long lasting or forever. It's just something that I mean, anything new that you go through is going to be challenging, whether it's a new career path, even for myself, this like becoming uh, being on YouTube, being online, putting videos out there to the world. You know, um, I did have some experience with creating videos because before doing YouTube, I was doing course creation, you know, making lifestyle lifestyle courses, you know, so I had already learned how to do how to do video which that in itself is a skill. So whenever I first started doing video, I would say to myself, um, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. Why is my video not coming out right? Why do I not look right? Why do I not sound right? Why am I not coming off as being confident? And then I had to get to a point to, to understand that video creation is a skill. And like any other skill, you have to practice, you have to create, you have to repeat it, you have to do it over and over and over and over until it becomes a part of who you are, you know? So um, lifestyle changes that you have to do mentally and able to thrive in any parts of Africa, it has to do with your mindset. A lot of it has to do with your mindset. And there are always things that you could do better because um, we, we normally do what we feel like is our best in the moment based on whatever whatever it is that you're going through you know um that's why even us as mothers we have a lot of regrets we have a lot of regrets because it's like we make a lot of mistakes there's no manual there's no manual that goes with mother motherhood you know um so we make a lot of mistakes and then we have a lot of regrets um but then we also have to realize that the way how we operated in the u.s we were operating and we were doing what we felt like was best in the time, you know? So if for myself, I, I was very, very, very strict with my children. I mean, like ridiculous, ridiculous strict. And, um, you know, as far as where they could go, who they could be with, um, places, places they could be, you know, I was really strict and I had and a tremendous amount of fears that caused me to be the way that I was, you know? So, and then after moving here to Gambia, and um, my children experiencing a different life where I was able to like let my guard down from a lot of a lot of the fears. Um, I let my guard down too much. I'll admit that I did let it down too much, you know. And we ran into some issues. Um, I'm not gonna get into that into that in videos. You guys know that I'm writing a book, okay? And um, my actually my book is written. My book is being edited, you know. So I'm more comfortable <laughs> going into a lot of detailed things. That's also in the description of this video. If you're interested in reading my book about what happened in Gambia, okay, then um, sign up for it in the description. Sign up for my book, okay? Inshallah is coming soon. But yeah, so, you know, um, there's just so much to get into. There's so much to get into. But yeah, we make a lot of mistakes. We make a lot of mistakes as mothers. And, um, and it's hard for you to live with yourself with a lot of the mistakes you made. But you have to forgive yourself because we did the best that we could for the environment that we were living in. It's not easy you know, and, um, and it's not going to be easy when you're living here, but when you see that your children have a different life here, you'll, you'll, you'll start to question. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe. You have to experience it, you know, but you'll start to question, was I being too strict before? Was I being unreasonable? You know, um, oh, wow. Like I spoiled several years of my child's life by not allowing them to have certain experiences. You know, I remember, very close to the time that my family was uh, relocating to Gambia, I was having issues with my teenage son, Adam. He's awake, but I was I was having some issues with my teenage son. Okay, and um, and he would complain to me about not being able to go out to the basketball the basketball court at nighttime, and I used to tell him. I can't even consider that. I understand how you feel. I know it should be okay. I used to tell him it should be okay. It should be safe for you and 10 other black boys to go to the basketball court and play and play basketball at night. That should be safe. I can't do it. Like I would just tell him I cannot allow you to do that because I can I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if something happened. And what is the something that may happen? <laughs> you know? So 
And it was, he couldn't understand. And um, uh, so anyway, when we moved here to Gambia, he was able to go to the basketball court at nighttime with his friends up until midnight. And I was able to be home sleeping like a baby, not worrying about him being taken to the police station or him being hurt or killed, you know, and um, I don't even know. I don't even know what else to say. It's a different life. It is a different life. A lot of times people make the mistake of looking at it, looking at um, challenging things with the mindset of, am I strong enough to face this? Am I, am I strong enough to tackle this? Do I have it in me? Okay, and, um, and that's actually the wrong way to look at it. A better way to look at it is, am I willing to do the work that it's going to require for me to accomplish this goal? Going into it with the mindset of, um, this is what I'm planning on doing. It's going to be challenge challenging because, um, you know, that was one of the mistakes even that I made for myself. I wasn't expecting, and it had to do with mindset, I wasn't expecting certain things to be as difficult as they were. You know, and, um, and also understanding that everything is going to be different and not waiting for yourself to get used to the differences, you know, not waiting for yourself. Like, for example, if you say, I've been here six months, I've been here a year, I can't get used to X, Y, Z. You don't necessarily have to get used to it to be able to thrive in the new country because there are a lot of things that you will not be able to get used to now. Even after three years, there are a lot of things that I still have not gotten used to. But so what do you do when you cannot adapt to something or, or get used to it? What do you do? So you're able to choose what you focus on and what you don't focus on, and you're able to control the way you allow things to affect you. So um, once you come to that realization, it's a game. It's a game changer, and it gives you a lot of strength. That strength that I'm talking about, and the and the resilience to be able to uh, maneuver through, navigate through challenges. Um, it's about how you look at it. If you're looking at it like this is not supposed to be hard or this shouldn't be this hard, or it shouldn't be hard for, or it, sh it shouldn't take this long, you know, to adapt, then that's, that's definitely the wrong, the wrong way to look at it. And in, in order um, to give yourself like inner strength, uh, you have to look from a perspective of, I'm willing to do the work for ho however long it takes for me to be able to figure out how to cope with whatever the situation is. That's one of the ways that is very helpful to look at it. And then also, you know, um, what am I, what, what changes am I able to make within self to build up better in, in endurance, you know, because there's always inner work you can do. There's always a, a self healing you can do. And a lot of times, so especially as mothers, when we come here, um, from the U S we come with a lot of baggage. Um, that's why, like, I feel like a lot of, uh, moms that move from the U S and to hear a lot of moms that move from the U S to Gambia, we do get attached to Gambia because, um, we, we love like the opportunity that we have to go through, uh, to start this healing journey and to be able to focus on yourself um, your self care, your wellness, and everything. Because in order to, in order for you to actually like thrive in a new environment, you have to overcome and uh, and get past and let go of a lot of the traumas that you experienced previously. You know, from I guess your home, our home there in the states, because we do go through a lot. Um, you know, operating in survival mode operating in what they call masculine energy, not being able to just relax um, in, in, in your natural femininity, you know? Yeah. So when you're, when you're operating in survival mode, you, you're just, you can't relax. You know, it's hard to explain, but if you're a mother living in America, you probably understand exactly what I'm talking about, you know, and for, and for you to be able to thrive in a new environment, you have to heal from a lot of things that you experience 
um, or uh, and a lot of times we don't even realize it until you move that you are in fact bitter from a lot of the things that you experience. So whenever you come to a new country and you face challenges that you didn't expect to face, and it will make you <laughs> it'll make you mad because you just feel like you know it'll it'll kind of put you in like a self pity mode where you're like, why do I deserve to be going through this? I went through everything I went through in the U.S. I managed to get out of there. Now I'm faced with this. This is harder than that. It will be harder in a lot of aspects. It won't be harder. It won't be harder all the way around, but it will be harder in a lot of aspects. And the hardest thing about moving um, actually is that you have to do the inner work. If you don't do the inner work, because the person you are in America, when you move to Gambia, you're not going to stay that same person. And I can almost guarantee you, if you stay the same person you were in America, you won't stay here because Americans are not equipped for this environment and this society. We're not. We're not used to any 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 of the ways that are here. And um, and our cultural differences are polar opposites and, and extreme. So in order for you to hold on to your American ways, your American uh, every everything about your American culture, um, you, in order to hold on to that, it's not going to fit. It just won't fit because, um, you know, like they say, when you're in Rome, you do as the Romans do. And I feel like that has a lot to do with your success with thriving here in Gambia. If you're moving from the States, you know, especially if you're moving as a family and you have children, if you hold on to a lot of the, <clears throat> the things that, that are cultural, um, for us and it's things that we consider to be normal there in America. When I was there, I thought, I really thought, and it, I guess it could just be um, naive, being naive and closed minded because I had never been outside of America. I actually had not been outside of America until we just moved here. We moved here without visiting. And, um, and that was our first time being outside of America, you know, but, um, when I was there, I assumed that the way life was there, I assumed that that was pretty much the way how like a lot of the rest of the world operate, you know, when it comes to, for example, like stranger danger, keep your children close. Don't allow, uh, anyone to deal with your children. Anyone you don't know, you know, you keep a distance from the neighbors. All of that is cultural. And it's um, and not just cultural, but it's it, a lot of it has to do with safety and where we live in America, the society, because it's an unsafe society. So when you move here to Gambia and um, let, me, let me give you an example. So this was um, in our first year of moving here to Gambia before I really, really had made um, a transition with the lifestyle changes. You know, in America, you people cannot just come come in in your yard or if you see someone in your yard and they didn't let you know you're there then that they didn't let you know that they're there you're gonna panic or you know you're you you you'll become fearful okay why why is this person in, in my yard um so basically i had i had someone that was in my backyard a man that was in my backyard and i didn't know that he was there but i was just in the kitchen washing dishes or something i looked up and there was a man in the backyard so I was just like looking around like okay first you think where are my children because <laughs> you know coming from America the first thing that's going to come to your mind is where are my children and then are there any children outside and why is this man there and let me go out there and find out where are my kids and why is he there right so I went outside and um the man was actually just getting mangoes from the tree he was just getting he was just getting mangoes from the tree and um and actually our security guard had told him that he could come in and he could get some mangoes from the tree which is completely normal here um but with me being american and being the person who is living in the house and renting the the, the house you know you would expect the person to actually ask the per, ask you would expect them to knock on the door and ask them like you know ask for permission to be able to do so so for myself i wasn't satisfied with the answer that the security guard let him come in you know i wanted to be aware which is because of what's normal in our culture i wanted to be aware that there was someone in in our yard in our compound you know i wanted to be aware that there was someone there so i actually have made a pretty big deal about it because i'm like no this is not okay if someone is here i need to know that they are here when you come here some of the fears they're just they're unnecessary fears they're fears that you just carried along with you you know so but it takes a tremendous amount of inner work i'll say 
you know, um, to say the least, to be able to change your mindset because we are who you are, where you were raised, the environment that you were raised in, it's it's embedded. It's embedded in who you are, and and that doesn't change just because your location changes. Like changes because geography cannot change who you are as a person. You have to change who you are as a person, and if you don't do the inner work, it's going to be very very difficult to thrive. You can survive. You can survive, and you and maybe become more bitter or become even more inflicted with trauma because you're unable to adapt. Um, so just changing your perspective considering you know just considering you know certain mindsets are um let me see unreasonable for here because they're necessary and they're reasonable and like i say when you're in america you have to have you have to operate that way because it's such a it's such a scary society to live in but if you hold on to for example here in gambia your children can't leave the front porch if you hold on to that, it's going to make it very difficult to actually get an, a true authentic experience of the country, you know, um, and, and it'll take a while because when I first moved here, it was it was very difficult, but I had to do the inner work. I had to say to myself, do you really fear not being able to see your children on your front porch or are you operating with the same fears and mentality because of where you come from, you come from an unsafe environment. So when I had to say to myself, yeah, there's nothing outside of my compound gate that is making me fearful. There's nothing over there but cows and goats and other and, and, and Gambian children that my children can play with. Um, I don't fear that someone is going to come and snatch my child. Um, but I started to call, I started to make them stay by the house just because that's what I'm used to. And if I was going to operate that 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 was my comfort zone. But I knew that had I operated like that you know, life wouldn't be very much different. You know, and we moved to have a different life. We moved to be able to enjoy life, to be be able to be fulfilled, you know, with life and not holding on to the same fears and anxieties, you know, um that we had in the US.